Okay. okay, it's seven o'clock. I'll call the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for Savoy ISD together at seven o'clock. At this time, we do have a quorum. So at this time, I'm going to ask Sandy, would you lead us in the word of prayer? Please? Okay. <laughs> Coming, Father, we praise your holy name. Thank you so much for loving us, for caring for us, for giving us Jesus. And we just thank you for our community of Savoy and our schools. We just pray for wisdom tonight and ask you to guide us in every decision we make. Please remind us that we're making decisions for the children of Savoy, uh, but to be fair to everyone. And we just praise you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This time we will stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, and Thank you. At this time, we need uh, to uh, elect a new board secretary since our other one jumped ship. At this time, I'm going to ask right now for nominations for secretary. Okay. All right. Sandy, you can eat when you want it. She hasn't looked up. No eye contact. <laughs> You're vice president, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Ken, you want to do it? You don't have to take minutes, Ron. Y'all are taking minutes. Oh, you do sign. Because I, I couldn't hear everything yeah. if I was. I if I don't sign. get elected again, then you're going to have to do this one in a couple you months. I do it anyway. Come my you have to do it. All the officers have to be every here. Every year. Oh, I see. Oh, they do? Well, then I don't want to do that again. I still have another year left. So the signatures? Yes. All right, I'll do it. All right, I'll nominate myself. Yeah. I'll nominate you in the year. Second. Thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't even ask you. I knew you was going to say no. So and if I lose, I'm you may. Yeah. Yeah. we'll have to do yeah. it. I have a motive to that I need a nomination for season motion to make the the nomination uh, cease yes I'll make a motion that nomination cease for second secretary barber and that's okay uh marble all those in favor of cease call for and opposed now for the election of the board secretary <clears throat> yeah it was made by marvin seconded by barber election for ken Webb to be secretary. All those in favor? All four, none opposed. Are you saying Barbara made the motion for him to be secretary? Yes. Okay. She nominated him in the Marvin sector. I think that's right. No, it's the other way around. Um, the other way around. Marvin. 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 Okay. <clears throat> now we got a communication public forum. No, sir. No. Okay. All right. We will go into student teacher and standard of the month. Can we go first? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll go student of the month. Jacob Reynolds, come up. I'm, I want you on Wednesdays, but I can't. I can't have you. Give me a couple years. You'll be up there. Right? So Jacob was nominated by Coach Clapp. Uh, Coach Clapp said he's a thoughtful, quiet leader, uh, which he is. Um, he's been very respectful of his peers, of all of the adults. He's a great teammate, a great classmate. Uh, just nothing but great things for anybody to have to say about Jacob. So uh, it is an honor. Congratulations. He's one of the friendliest guys yeah. at school. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you bet. All right. Our uh, teacher of the month, uh, Miss Amy Brindley. So I had the privilege again to interview Miss Brindley this summer, and uh, she's very qualified in the interview. Wanted to do everything possible, but hasn't taught upper level English. And from day one, just so many questions and just can I do it? Can I do it? And just needing encouragement and getting encouragement from peers and from myself and from students. And she has just transformed and blossomed into someone who's teaching with rigor and and just working every day to ensure that those kids are getting better and better and better. And it's really changed from someone who is I don't know if I can do it to someone who knows that they can do it, and she's done a great job. So congratulations. I'm so you. proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you. And our Savoy standard, Miss Vicki Martin, a standard for sure. I'll say this uh, of all of her students, but I, I have uh, two of my kids are her students. And every single thing that she assigns, and any of you who are educators can attest, sometimes you assign things and you just need them to get it done, you need these grades. She has detailed notes and feedback on every single thing where every student knows exactly the expectation will grade everything. If it's if it's a 10 point question, she'll look and find a way to get them two and a half points and, and to say, hey, it's not all bad, right? We, we saw that at the beginning of the year. You know, it, there, there's a lot. And so the, the time that she takes and dedicates to uh, assigning and grading and assessing and trying to get that feedback to students, that's, that is the, the standard we want to set. So congratulations. Thank you you are fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I feel like it's going to be like a ditto on the uh, <laughs> student presentation. Uh, for sure, Colton Brooks could come up. Man, I think everything he said about Jacob, uh, Miss Hoffer was the one that recommended Colton. One of the most soft spoken kids, always got a smile on his face. Look at it right now. I'm getting uh, <laughs> I don't think there's a mean bone in this kid's body right here. He's, he's an awesome kid. But, uh, I can read you uh, what Miss Hofford said uh, real quick, just to give you just a few of them. Very respectful, always ready for class. Um, knows you can count on him every single day. He's always polite to classmates and staff, and he's one of the hardest workers in the fifth grade. Uh, he's also one of our uh, UIL participants, which I'll talk about in my report. He was one of those that uh, participated in Ready riding and got a medal for that as well. Good spades in flag football and baseball, like you told me. So, Colton Brooks is our student. Of the Congratulations. <laughs> and my teacher of the month, it was Miss <clears throat> Morrison. Miss Morrison was actually one of my first hires here. Gosh, I get the thing. Or four years ago. Um, she was actually hired in October because we grew in size um, in our kindergarten that year. Uh, so she was a kindergarten teacher for two years. And then this past year, she swapped over. She's moved up and she's teaching more reading in the uh, first grade side, but very dynamic classroom. Uh, I always love going in her classroom. That's always like, I don't know, I'd use the word chill, like the, the tone of her classroom every time I go in there is like almost a whisper uh, and very inviting to learn. And she's a very, uh, when we think about technology and all the things we've added over my course of the time here, I put her right up there with as a, a, a person that takes that technology and embeds it into her classroom and definitely an asset to Savoy Elementary. So Ms. Morrison is our teacher of the month. Great lesson. And our Savoy standard, Miss Rowland, if you did have the opportunity to come and, and see our Christmas program, uh, which was fantastic. It was neat to get it back in the gym, too. And, uh, all the hard work that goes into that. A lot of people don't see the expectations that we have for that position in general uh, for that uh, Christmas program. There's a lot of time and effort that she puts in. Uh, 
she starts working with those kids about two months prior uh, in individual classes time that she has 30 minutes a day. But we expect her, to, I don't know, three or four hours before the presentation to crunch all that together in about two hours time and make that a performance. We don't practice that every day with all kids. So uh, we take that and mesh it. And it's always kind of scary going into that performance at night, but she seems to always pull it off. So uh, she is our Savoy standard uh, for this month. Okay, I'm up. Um, the elementary and older kids, high school kids, made a, a video to show you guys. There's gift cards in front of you. Daniel, uh, Mr. Henderson, you guys delivered all that, right? So just a, a thank you for allowing us to, you know, to be here and do our job and supporting us. And, and anytime I get to get in front of teachers or kids or community members, um, I always make sure to tell them how appreciative we are to have a board that supports um, our, our mission, our vision, our goals, and, and above all, put students uh, number one. You guys have never told us no if it comes to students, and, and we can't thank you enough for that. Make sure it's turned up. And here we go. Oh, no. I swear, I swear the sound was just working. Well, Daniel, you picture you guys. Do what? Down. Oh, where? I don't even know where the remote is. Hey, <laughs> let's start it over. Thank you, there, the board. Thank you so much for everything you do in the Savoy ISD. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just, yeah. Okay. You okay now? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I appreciate everybody. Uh, at that, we'll move into consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to approve yes, consent agenda as presented. I second Thank that. You. Motion made by Barbara, seconded by Ken to accept the Consent agenda is presented. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Seven, four, none opposed. Uh, we'll go into the reports elementary, Danny Henderson. I just put a couple of things. One is our UIL mentioned that earlier uh, at our Nine week assembly on Friday, uh, we got to give out all of our UIL awards. We gave out 132 medals uh, to you know, several different kids. I think we had almost 80 kids go over to Dodge City and participate in that UIL event. And so kids uh, did phenomenal. You can see we scored uh, 801 points. I think we scored 840 last year. Ector didn't participate the year before, and they came back and, and got in the mix and took some of those points away because they, they've always been very competitive. Uh, in the UIL, but very proud of our kids. We did have some sickness in our sixth grade. Heard us, we had to shuffle some kids around, so I think we lost some team points uh, because of some sickness claims. Which you probably noticed in my uh, attendance rate, man, that's probably the lowest attendance rate I've ever uh, had in my career. To be honest, but ninety-one percent was very low. That was at three weeks there in December. We had a lot of flu and different things going around, and our attendance was very low. Uh, for that month. Hopefully we can get that turned around. It's been pretty good this uh, first couple of weeks back. So. Um, we got match testing. We're doing that. It also starts tomorrow, uh, giving our teachers an open window to do that middle of the year map, especially for our star scores this week. 
I mean, our star grades this week, and then our K12 will do it uh, more than a week after because they're in the middle of an in class uh, window as well, which is another dyslexia evaluation and things that happens in our K1. Mm -hmm. So, uh, other than that, we do have a bully presentation uh, on the 19th. We got a Region 10 rep coming in. He's going to do a presentation for us on the 19th uh, during the school days. Okay. Any questions? So what about failures for the spine weeks? Did you have any in any grade we level? Have one hinder is the only failure we have for the nine weeks. Was it kindergarten? So it was secondary, yes, sir. It is a kinder student that we had. We typically see about two or two to five right. kids in nine weeks, and this one just ended up being. Usually we'll see a few in fifth and sixth grade, but we didn't have them so much. I think nine week has helped that probably. Teachers have a longer time to, to get some of that stuff in. A lot of the times at fifth and sixth, you just see kids getting lazy and not turning stuff in. The more change they want, it's more about their reading progress. Uh, we do see a few failures every once in a while at the first grade level. I will see it because their reading level is not on target and their reading grade is tied specifically to uh, their progress level of reading. Uh, so we see some failures pop up in that early. Uh, so you think your map testing is going to show everybody on grade level or um, or below grade level? Yeah. Well, I think we'll have kids. We don't really look at are they on grade level? Are they making progress? Yeah. We'll take each, each individual student and look at where they were, and then our teachers set goals with those kids, and we just want to see them are they progressing after a semester. Uh, on grade level, it's kind of on their grade level. You know, it's hard to take a kid from a third grade level to a sixth grade level if that's where they're at. But are we are we taking them on that constant right. climb yeah. with all the interventions that we're throwing at them in between? Uh, so that's what MAPS is for. It's going to tell us exactly where we're at prior to going into that star. I'm just a little concerned because from the first of the year to the middle of the year, you know, what else do y'all look at to be sure those kids are? On grade level or intervention, do you use something else to look at? You know, the teachers looking at their grades, looking at their progress in the classes. Um, if it's a kid that's in that intervention period, then obviously whatever um, maps kind of dictates uh, what their what skills are missing off grade level. So those teachers are going back during those cardinal times and teaching those skills that those kids don't have. Uh, so obviously they're using that to track uh, are they making progress with that individual here during that individual time, but that's going to show up in the maps. You want to talk about cardinal time and kind of what you see? Yeah, um, some card cardinal time. I kind of, kind of put it in there because I don't know. After we give a maps assessment uh, as an elementary, we we take those, uh, take that the data and basically meet, and we tier our kids in tier three, tier two, tier one. Uh, tier three is our kids that uh, either are not meeting performance or they're meeting uh, growth, but not on grade level. So it puts them in that bottom tier, um, you know, versus their peers. So that's a kid in a tier three going to continue to get tier three interventions, which either working with Ms. Maxwell in a reading intervention or they're in small groups with the individual teacher, depending on what study is with these. And we also tier two, tier one is all your kids that are. They're, they're fine. They're either above grade level or on grade level, and there's no concern of them not passing star. The tier two kids, the individual teacher works with uh, them during their cardinal time. So uh, as we progress through that, when we give that uh, middle of the year, we want to see growth. So those kids that we've worked with since the beginning of the year, are they making any progress? Did they go from a tier three to a tier two? If they didn't, obviously we're going to continue uh, that tier three path. So kids get jostled there just a little bit at the middle of the year. And obviously, kind of don't shift gears because I think we do it all year. Uh, we're focusing on, you know, those star uh, concepts that they're going to be successful with star and their grade level content and they'll just continue uh, their efforts. I don't know if I answered the question or not, but. I think maps does drive that, but individual teacher data is driven based off of those individual uh, time periods, which is 
I mean, they spend uh, Monday through Thursday, 45 minutes a day with those intervention times and stuff like that. Our tier three kids, they see Miss Maxwell four days a week, 45 minutes a day. And man, she is, she doesn't just go there. She, she gives them outside assignments that they're having to uh, do reading assignments uh, and come back and, and she's just trying to advance that reading level as much as we can. So, but is is that all grade levels or just local grade so levels? Two through six. Two, two through K through six. one, it kind of runs through our reading recovery mm -hmm. group. Uh, so, if a kid in first grade is not showing to be up to par, then they're identified through some tests that we do at the beginning of the year. Uh, they get put in our reading recovery program or get put in line for our reading recovery times, depending on the number of kids that we have through there. Uh, it's about a 22 week course that uh, Ms. Weger and I had understood Ms. Maxwell was doing reading recovery too, but she's not. Okay. She does two through six intervention for reading. And so it is just for reading though that she does that intervention. Are there any math interventions? During the cardinal time. Okay. Especially with our house bill of 45, 45 kids that failed, uh, we have to provide 30 or 30 hours of uh, instructional support during the school year. So that's done during that cardinal time. So all of our kids that weren't successful last year, they're required to be in the uh, cardinal time. They don't go to the tier two. Or, and really, if they were in the tier one, we would still put them in a, a tutorial group with the teacher. Sometimes we get a battle there with kids in tier three and they failed math. We go away which one's more important. If it's behind two or three grade levels in reading, you want to catch that reading up as fast as you can or try to balance the the <clears throat> math and we, we stick to trying to fix the reading side. If we can get that reading grade level up. And sometimes we get into those uh, meetings. We, we meet after every assessment we give and we try to uh, kind of a tug and pull sometimes because uh, like Ms. Maxwell, when she's got those kids and they're not advancing, well, she wants to leave them more um, or she doesn't want them to go to math. So we get into a little bit of tug and pull sometimes on certain kids uh, when the data is not where we think it needs to be. But so. then on the first side, our teachers, we actually had a plan for the week after and I had several teachers come to me um, when they actually started this week. So we kind of would pick up the set them up and running and uh, got our kids re-entered uh, and they're going to have the option to go ahead and get in. It just speaks to the program. They want the data. They want to see what uh, what they've been doing. Is it being effective for those kids to progress on? Very effective program. I honestly would take it anywhere with me. Uh, yeah. To any other ditch. I didn't have we it before. To I got it. It's yeah. very, very effective uh, on meeting those intervention strategies. Hey, anybody else? Andy, you got two more? Sure. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Thank you. So the four option I went ahead and put it just with both months of attendance right there. And uh, our junior high competing guy, all they got they got second, I didn't include that. The uh, runners up to Dodge City. to celebrate there as well. So that is good things to see our students achieving and some of the good instruction our teachers are doing. So Just same thing about failures for the high school. So, uh, we high. Had, in the nine weeks, we had one eighth grader what three ninth graders, two tenth graders, two eleventh graders, and four seniors. Two of those seniors were dual credit courses. Um, so something about about those with uh, some of those upper level. Um, Mrs. Morris had a great idea, you know, because we we're on a a whole. Uh, year grading scale as far as credit for a course. 
So a, a student that, say, failed Algebra 2 in the first semester is taking that course in credit recovery uh, while being in person for the second semester at the same time where we can then raise that first semester grade by essentially having they're going to take they're going to end up taking three semesters of algebra two and that way we can we can uh, look at that progress in that our ingenuity our credit recovery program to um, to look at that first semester and say we have that progress was better than what you did in the first semester so it does give them an opportunity to to get that extra extra so our, our senior numbers grew from the beginning of the year for sure. Because then we just have four or five starting out this year. Four or five. Was it last year we just had the low seniors? Last, last year. We were last seniors. year's. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. So I was think I was thinking of that. Yeah. Okay. So how do you how do you do the uh, credit recovery? So credit recovery is in a program called Ingenuity. Uh, students log on. Um, again, it's not a it's not a perfect system. It is the, it's the system that we have uh, where we pay for uh, a certain number of sockets where we can have three students logged on a class period at a time and they have to log in and log out. So we pay for uh, these placeholders. And it's a it's pace. There's an instructor that's instructing via video. There are uh, grade. Sorry, there's, there's classwork and there's quizzes for them to complete and get to see. Uh, their grades on each of those, and you get to see percent completion uh, through that program. Is it kind of self-paced? Uh, it can be. A, a student that can choose to um, <laughs> do more and more and more and uh, can, uh, can do very well and can complete a course in a semester. Who uh, failed a course last year, uh, who was in credit recovery for the entire year and, and completed that course in one semester and was able to then go to uh, an elective course. So my feeling that dual credit, that was just from the nine weeks, so. That was the dual credit. So, so the way that our, our dual credits are, we only get that semester grade. So that student will not get credit for that dual credit course and cannot take a dual credit in the, for that course in the spring. Okay. So they, they are, in ingenuity for the course they failed, and now they are an in person course for the, the second half of that semester. So, so kind of a, a, a double edged sword for that for, for that for those two students. I have a question. Yes, Do we have someone looking into their canvas to see to know that okay, we have two students that are possibly going to yes. fail uh, credit? For for this um, for this fall semester, we did have Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Morris who Contacted the students multiple times, contacted the parents multiple times. Um, and uh, you know, and, and at some point we said, hey, this is this is I mean, this is it. Uh, and uh even three weeks before the course was over, this is what you have. This is uh this is what you can turn in, being in contact. Uh both Ms. Morris and Ms. Smith were in contact with the professors. And uh just still didn't, didn't, didn't meet the expectation of the man. So we can't pull them out at a certain point and put them in a regular there, class. There is a uh, a drop date that was also communicated to them and said this is the date where you can drop where there is no consequence to you. Uh, and uh, both of those students, you know, and parents said we can do this. We can make it through. We can, we can get that credit. So, yes, that that day was made known to them. That's good because that's transcripted. That's it for is. life. Yes, yes, <laughs> it is. That that will stick with you for a bit. Yes. So no one failed to um, that will affect extracurricular activities. Uh, yes, all of those nine weeks, those did all of those. Uh, yes. yes. Well, those, yeah. Those were the ones. Okay. Uh, and again, several of those students, they are the students who, what I've seen in secondary education is students who don't have someone to advocate for them that really wants them to be included in something. They're the ones who are most at risk of failing because there's not a coach that says, need you. There's not, there's not a theater teacher that says, I need you to put your stuff in order. Um, someone that's in the background pushing them to do things. So the students that we had, um, none of those students um, were uh, on a team competing at the at the, the check, the grade check before this. 
And our our eligibility calendar, our next grade check is Monday the 23rd. And they will, they can regain eligibility uh, the week following that, Monday the 3rd. So I'm confused a little bit. And then if some of them, so are the ones that failed, are they out right now? Like say, if they were playing basketball, which is what's going to, are they sitting out right now, but they could regain it a week after that 23rd or? The way our eligibility calendar is set up. So everyone was eligible during Christmas break. It's a UIL uh -huh. stipulation. And so when we came back, um, the 11th, because we had a three day week, the 11th is the day they will gain and lose eligibility. So you, this, you, when you, you receive a you receive a week on the front end. If I fail, yeah, I get to play for a week. A when I lose a week on the back end, I've got to wait a week after. So that. just so I'm clear, so I understand. So we're gonna lose some kids. No, no, no. So so the, the kids that had failed this nine weeks were kids who were not. Oh. They were not eligible. No one regained eligibility, but no one lost okay. that was previously participated. Okay, okay, okay. Does that help you out? Yep. Okay. That makes it clear. I wasn't following. No, I, I understand. I can see how that can be. Be a little convoluted. Hey, anybody else got anything? Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, Mr. Brown. So, I'm up, right? Athletic program. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to kind of look at what I sent on Friday in the weekly update. Uh, boys and girls basketball are in the middle of district play. We were both uh, two and two on the girls' side, one and one on the boys' side going into Friday, both tied for fourth or in fourth place. Uh, both end up losing. We play, is it Ector tomorrow? Ector tomorrow night, um, who is who is there with us. So still, you know, now that 1A has taken four teams to the playoffs, we're right in the mix of it. We are we are right where we want to be, you know. Uh, we're, we're gaining strides. We're making progress. Um, same with the junior high kids. We played Fate. Uh, who do we play on Thursday? Fate. Fate on Thursday, we play, who do we play this Thursday, Daniel? Dodds. Uh, Dodds. Yes, yes, yes. Um, boys lost by – it was close, man. It was so close at the junior high game. Trent had like four or five coaches on the bench. Everybody was helping out trying to trying to get that win. Um, but they're just – you can tell they're learning. Um, I had some some of you board members – some of the board members in here and community members the past week or so, um, and everybody has kind of said that you can see that it's coming along up here now. Um, we just got to get the skills caught up to the brain which is, it's not a fast process, but it is a process. It's coming along. Softball gets to start practice on Friday. Baseball gets to start practice the following Friday, so the 13th and the 20th. Um, we found out today that we can use Bell's track. We're going, uh, she texted me today and said we can use that anytime we want. Same for Bonham, so if there's a conflict there, we can go to Bonham. If there's a conflict there, we can go to Bell's. Uh, even on the weekends, you know, on Saturday, we can practice as well. Are they not going to charge us for it over there at Bells no more? We're just we're going to we're going to work with them. Um, some of our boys were playing tennis this weekend. Golf is right around the corner. Stock shows, you know, Fort Worth stock show starts this weekend. Robotics is going on. Beta is in early February. We have UIL. We have one act play. So as I said, we are we are starting the busy busy season. Um, Mr. Cates has met with coaches and sponsors and and teachers to really kind of build the schedule of. We have this kid doing this, you know, because one kid may be doing every one of those things. And there's we had a meeting this week with boys coaches. Well, we're going to do track and we're going to do baseball and we're going to do golf and we're going to do tennis. So how are we going to fit this in before the sun goes down? So we just kind of have to, you know, we put the puzzle together and we make it work on the boys side and the girls side. Uh, that is a, a unique, you know, that's a, that's a small school problem, but it's good that our kids want to do all these things. Like I said this morning at the meeting, Joe, if we have enough kids in events, you know, if we have so many kids in track events, well, we can stack competition. We can get points there. We can steal points at meets there. Um, same for tennis, same for golf. If we have five players out there, we have a team. Uh, don't know what the score might be, but we have five kids playing, so we may be the first, second, third place team, something like that. So we want to encourage our kids and never tell them no when opportunities arise. We're going to have a softball team this year. Yes, ma'am. Coach, yeah, coach, um, Coach Clapp and Johnson have been out there all last week and all weekend, and they're out there today getting it ready. And they're in the, you know, they're in the cages and they're in their storage areas and, the, and they're dragging the fields and stuff. So they're excited. Baseball schedule and softball schedule both finalized. Um, should both be on Facebook and the website. 
I'll check when I get home tonight, but I'm pretty sure they well, are. Clapp said that he, I think he said he had 13 at the game the other night signed up. Do, do we have any numbers on baseball? Not yet, Sam. Not yet. Uh, what about that Dave Campbell thing? Did we hear anything back from that? Not yet. There's no results on that yet. Oh. So we were in, you know, we were uh, in, in the running, in the hunt to be Dave Campbell's team of the year, which that's a, I mean. Where my finger out. Hey, yeah. Reg, 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 well, 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 there's, there's a lot of <laughs> Yeah, people are noticing that you know the successes, uh, major and minor, that we're having here. And it's not the adults, it's the kids that, that deserve that you know that did it, so they get the credit for it. He's coaching golf and tennis. Coach Fagan is coaching tennis, so he was in White Right this weekend. I know Daniel's sons went over and played, and were with Coach, not being Coach, but they were over there with Coach Fagan. Golf will be Coach Bates. Track will be Coach Guzman. Coach Townsend. Mr. Cates may help out a little. And Ms. Streetman, Coach Streetman, um, is that all the spring sports? Did I miss any? Baseball, Baseball Coach Johnson, softball Coach Clapp. They might help him, Coach uh, Coach Johnson. Coach Johnson will have Tuck Frazier, and Coach Clapp will have uh, Miss Henderson. Yes, Lindsay Galley. I've got everybody okay. in my mind. Uh, and, and so Banks is coach. Teaching golf, did yes. you say? Yes, ma'am. And what did you say? I'm sorry, you called it off real fast. I didn't get it. Uh, okay. What, which one? What? Well, I got Fagan tennis. Fagan tennis, golf. Bates golf. I got the softball and baseball. That's oh, it, right? Yeah. Did I miss track. It? track. Okay, so it'll be Coach Guzman, Coach Streetman, and Coach Townsend. And um, Mr. Cates will be helping some. He is uh, the track guru over there. Yes, guru. Ask him. That's good. Yeah. We, we've, had, <laughs> we've had some good track teams in the past. Hopefully, we can get that back. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, our, our track schedule, um, we found out that we're kind of, you know, get as many track meets as we can. And there's not a whole lot around here. There's not a whole lot of tracks around here for small schools. So, our first track meet, are we going to Gordon or Strong? Gordon. Gordon. So, we're going oh, way out there on, <laughs> on uh, you know, west of Weatherford. Baseball, our first baseball game, we're going to Perrin. Same area, west of Weatherford out there in the Peaster oh, yeah. and Grayford area. Um, well, what's happened is, when, like, when I was in school here, Pros or, uh, yeah, Prosper and all those people were crumb. Everybody, they were somewhat they, closer. They were small. They, were, yeah, so they, they, they had tracks, but now everybody's big and there's not, yeah, now the little schools left. Uh, I don't know. Does Fannadale have a track over there? Oh, I'm there. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, I don't know. Fannadale. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think, Yana. I don't know. Yeah. The only ones I know of is is at least 2A, pretty much, that I know of. Why, well, right? Oh, really? And, and I'll attest that, that Coach Guzman has, has called every track coach and athletic director. Uh, 3 a.m. below in a 50 mile radius to try to find track meets. And uh, most teams don't host because it takes 40 to 50 committed individuals to host a track meet. And most people are not willing to put in that effort uh, to do that, you know, especially with baseball and softball being so, so big. Uh, you're posting a track meets a lot, so there aren't a lot of people around here that are posting. Yes, tennis and golf is a little easier because um, our tennis kids can go to JV tournaments and freshman tournaments. Same for golf. We can enter JV tournaments, and there's a golf course in every town, you know, so. Um, really? Well, pretty much. Come on. We, <laughs> we can, we can <laughs> find. We'll, we'll travel for golf there. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> we'll travel for that. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, there's Mr. Henderson right down the road. He's got the little nine hole in his backyard, so we can help. <laughs> All right, anybody have anything else for that letter? Okay. Well, Pete, you got anything new? Just pretty much what's on that. You want to know anything? How are we coming on the well, doors and all that? That's How we'll get about 40 to 50 on the week after no. that. They come back on Friday. And we we'll step those next week. Now that new there's stuff going to be running through our servers and yeah. stuff. I, I make a report. Yeah. Okay. They got the right. additional IP address. And they got I was wondering about that. Yeah, it's going to type out input structure, and he's going to train me how to program the card somehow when they got everything that's, online. Uh -huh. That's that's what we're waiting for. We're going to make some chain order a little bit on Wednesday. They're going to come and walk through with me. We're going to add additional. Uh, some kind of magnet lock on the second gate at high school. We need to move the button to allow magnet. 
Yeah. To allow them once to get into the rest of that. And we're going to go ahead and be key on the existing door. You're not going to use the whole one. I think we have some problem with it. So let's make it more secure. Are you going to be able to make the cards? Yes. For the, in, the, for the staff and stuff yes. like that? I'm going to do a key fob. You ordered 150 okay. fobs, right? 100. 100. 50 cards. Okay. One to two. But yeah, 100 fobs. That's the plan. Okay. Yes. And then we're going to get one. We can time them for six to nine if you want. We can. Okay. I would want to want me to put them. You have access, you know, um, unrestricted access or restricted access to everybody can have full reign. People can have no reign. You know, uh, repeat can kind of yeah. set up per kind of teacher up. or per employee how how much access they have to the school buildings. And every time they come, they scan it in some system. So and so come in, what do you about that? That's it. Yeah. Put it in a scanner eyes. You're still worried about yeah. your eyes. <laughs> Let's not do that, Joe. That takes up lots and lots of memory. No, I'm still waiting for the new switch. They have pushed it in for the third time. Now it's in April. So I don't know. As soon as I come back in, I have to come on. But if now, it has a bad problem with power. I don't know what happened. It just cut off, cut in and out. And some, some of the switch. So I'm, I'm gonna have like two extra backup right now. But we should have 10 more coming in and I can get that soon. Okay. Yeah, wait a minute. Um, that way to take me. I don't know. We saw 10 of them in the back loop and everything. So I think it works. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Is that how they can pay work? It fills up all the time. Yeah. No. So, it works. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what you do. You've got 160. You take the Yeah, I, I think something happened today because they, they were going off. Yeah. Nothing in, in some of the. Yeah, they they work. Can you hear? No, oh, it's a, it's a silent. Oh, is it? It's a silent deal. It um, sends us a text on our phones, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and cool. we go and we get to investigate. We get to get to search and do all that fun stuff. So it's a. Uh, you know, there is a time where you kind of suspected and you were ignorant, and you know, like there's a bliss in it, but now you're like, well, you know, you gotta gotcha. now you gotta know, and now you gotta do something. And so, it's, <laughs> so this isn't for you, but what is there a consequence for students breaking on campus? Or yes, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's against okay. state law. There is an immediate consequence. I don't think that we have that big of a problem, but I'm going to go around. I walk think it's around everywhere. Our community. Community. Yeah. It's yeah. everywhere. It's walk everywhere. around the community. Apples don't fall far from trees. You know, you'll, you'll see my daughter. Dave, even over at Dodge City, I know some of the girls that were star players a couple of years ago on the state basketball team over there were hitting them too. Mm -hmm. I heard they got caught doing it, you know. So. Yeah. I don't remember that in the book, but I guess it was all outlined. Um, I it's agree. posted so if y'all when you walk into the gym next time we have the game you'll see right there there's uh, a welcome sign and that according you know state law says smokeless tobacco electric whatever you call them electric cigarettes all illegal on school grand uh, grounds and you know follow this code yeah and we try to announce that before we get to the competition yeah so please and it's all right it should be good to 2020 second back it's legal if you're over 18 or 21. I think it's 21. 21, yeah. Thank you. I, I got a question, Jance, on, on for Jance. Yeah, for Jance on that. I guess is, are we still on that? Well, well that's technology. Okay, well, same, uh, same. On this deal where we're doing the the are the uh, payless for the games and stuff now, whatever it's called, ticket speaker. Yeah, pay, yeah, the ticket speaker or whatever. On that, do we have any? I'm just curious if that's affected. Revenue any, or do we have any records? Which Denise may know this of what the revenue was in the past. Do you all keep records of what? Uh, I'm not involved in it. I have, we've not seen any records. We no. We we chose to deposit once a month or once every six weeks. You can choose once a day, once a week, once a month, once a six. But what I'm saying is like so. If you could last December or whatever. You know, last, uh, last year December when we weren't doing that. Versus this, I mean, is there a way to do that? Do we have? We can pull what we we can pull boxes, and then once we 
uh, get our payout. And I, I can curious. log in and see. I haven't logged in. Obviously, I mean, it's kind of quieted down, but I did hear some complaints about it at first. But I was curious if it's affected any re you know, revenue from it or whatever. But anyways, okay. I was just curious on it. We'll we'll way next time? Yeah. If we could just see what our revenue was versus last year. If, you want if, December to December? Well, yeah, but if you could pull probably, I mean. I'll pull a few that yeah, way because yes. we could have had more home games. Yes. Last yeah. Year. If you could pull, I'll just bring basketball much. from yeah that time to this time, or whenever we started the ticket mm -hmm. speaking deal or whatever. From when we have got home games, do we send the visiting team? Yes, ma'am. Because we do have a lot of people coming that say they know nothing about it. No, we send it. The teachers are kind of. I was out there a little while the other night. And we send it to their principal, know. to their AD, to their coaches. Yes, ma'am. Uh, now, what they do with that information, wow. I don't know. But it's on our website. It's on our Facebook. We send it to their administrators. We send it to their coaches. Please tell your people that when you get here, here's we send them the QR code. We do all of that. All right. So we want. Well, we'll just go basketball. I'm be honest with you. Most most schools right now do. Especially at bigger school. Well, they show up and they didn't do it. There's a we have QR code right there for them. We have instructions. Oh, go to www. Do, www. do what? Can do the form or it's a door. We can't. Sure, we can. Okay. Can I see your phone? And I'll just yeah, absolutely. And that's what you have to do. With my mom and dad. Okay. Well, they probably get senior pass. I've just been to yeah. those away <laughs> that one away game for football. They did that. And we didn't know about it. Uh, and, and lots of people had trouble. I don't think Mike Bomer ever got it to work for him. And he should, uh, he should get a pass, though. Huh? Does he, does he not hey, talk, you're talking about an away game. Oh, in an away game? An away game, yeah. And then I know Hector and God City, though, when we both went there, they're just still Yeah, they don't do it. In and Vanadale, and Vanadale, too, they're still doing cash. Yeah. Uh, the most of the little school around here. Are good I, I'm just thankful I'll have that over whatever age card. <laughs> you don't have to mess with it. <laughs> okay, Joe? Got anything? Just what's in there? I'll let Joe got a question. You got any, <clears throat> anybody got any questions for Joe? Oh, I have one little bitty question. I want to know. You do a very thorough report, and I read every word of that title. The card in the field, is that the baseball softball field? That's my name. That's okay. My name. Well, I don't think that's what you're talking about, but I want to be sure. Yeah. So we're going to be ready for those same things. Can be in pretty yes. shape, the best shape it can be in. Better than what it has been in the past. All right. I mean, we're taking, taking the patent cage, all the steel and I saw that. things like that, getting the net pulled up higher. Okay. When the weather permits, we're going to try to fix the rust. We already did that. Good. Yeah, because they have it all. We will. We have a color now, a different shade of white. At least it's white. Anybody else got any questions for Joe? Uh, I want to thank him for the buckets, for the bucket too. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, get a few more because we have some backups. That would be great too. Oh, yeah, we got. With that, we'll close the report. We'll start into the action item considering possible action to rescind the 11 14 2022 motion to name Sunny Cates as district sped coordinator and stopping for this position. So, this is before we thought we, you know, when well, everything happened and we, yeah. we didn't know um, we were going to get to hire Miss Francis in a few minutes here in, in that role and she's going to transition to that. <clears throat> here, Mo. I make the motion to rescind. Do I have to read all that as presented? Okay, do I hear a second? Joe? Okay, we have a motion to rescind the 11 14 2022 motion naming Sunny Kate as district SPED coordinator and staffing for the position. Uh, is there any further questions? So is that withdrawal, rescind, or resend? Is it no, it's rescinded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor? Seven, four, none opposed. <clears throat>
consider a possible action to approve the Region 10 Master uh, Interlocal Agreement. A yearly process for, for food services and purchasing co-ops um, to allow us to be part of that for Region 10 as that is. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the Region 10 Master Interlocal Agreement. I second that. Okay, motion made by me, saved by Ken. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? All for and unopposed. Consider possible action to approve the 2021-2022 annual financial report. This is what you have in front of you um, and the first report, our financial our financials for the year, which I wasn't here for the duration of the year, but I'll let Denise add to that. And the board, if you do not want your black notebook, I do need it. You just need a couple of I'll make a motion. We approve the 2021-2022 annual financial report. Second. <clears throat> Second by Joe. Any further questions? All those in favor? Seven, four, and none opposed. Keep that no sign. Uh, consider a possible action to approve the final 2021 21 2022 first report. Another hundred for how many years in a row, Miss Pew? That's good. <laughs> Make a motion <laughs> to approve the final twenty one twenty two <clears throat> as presented. I second it. Motion made by Barbara, taking it by Sandy to approve the. Uh, final 2021 2022 report. Any further questions? All those in favor? All four, none opposed. We spent 100 out of 100 multiple years in a row. She ain't messing around, is she? <laughs> <laughs> uh uh. uh so Consider possible action to approve credit card point to purchase gift cards for the staff drawing. We use the points. We have gift cards. We give them out in December, well, like we did in December or um, at the end of the year. So we just need approval to do that. I make a motion to approve the credit card to purchase gift cards for the staff. I second that. Motion made by Barbara, seconded by Ken, to approve the uh, credit card points for the, for the purchase of the gift cards for the staff drawings. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Seven four, none opposed. Superintendent's report. Uh, I addressed athletics already, so I'm gonna, unless there's any questions on that one, I'm going to go over it for here it is. I'm sorry about what you're looking for your deal, but I will say you on that you're talking about the junior high game, and I I'm, I don't know, I guess I I may have been the only one that was there, but the junior high girls beat fate. Yeah, they, uh, lost, yeah. they, they, they lost to them the first time. No, I we think talked about that right there. The, so you're talking about, so the, yeah, you said the boy, but you're talking about the boys, but the girls beat them bad this time. They did really good. So that, that's a good team they got going there. Okay, man, I put that on the very bottom. Um, ideal impact, we saved $1,880.71 in the month of December, which would be our highest, highest month yet by. Oh, probably 200, 215 $220. And it brings us up to $10,360.46 saved for the year or since since the installation of the project. Um, Repeat talked about the installation updates with the switches, with the intercoms, phones, doors, roof updates, and options. So, you know, we, we voted in October, November to replace the, the damaged area of the roof at the high school. Uh, Coriel Roofing came out again with another inspector and they got on the roofs in right before Christmas break and found hail damage from a storm in 2015 or 2016 and filed the claim with TASB. The TASB man was out of the office until Friday and he didn't respond to the emails today. 
But what we are hoping and what it looks like is we'll get to replace the damaged areas, which is quite a bit for the deductible costs. So rather than spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, we get it for for you know insurance costs, which I was very, very happy to see that they came. They can go back that far. They can go back even further than that. He said he could go back. He was asking for our policy from 20 years ago. Uh, who were we with at this time? Who were it, did it change during these times? Good. So good. Um, you, you've met the guy Wendell here presented about the roof. Mm -hmm. The guy that is the inspector is a retired superintendent from East Texas. They moved down to South Texas. So he was talking me through it all and really, you know, just helping me, helping the young superintendent yeah. as a retired superintendent. So awesome. fingers crossed on that. Yeah. Team of eight training. Um, what are y'all thinking of as far as, as month-wise? When would y'all like to do that? I would like to do it early. I'd like to do like, get it over with. I'm do it in March. Yeah. Let's get it early. So March. you want to go next month then? Would you like February, late February? Yeah. February, March, whichever. Yeah. One. Okay. I will start calling our trainers, our presenters, and see when's available, and I will put it in the sessions? weekly update. Did anybody... Don't forget, this is legislative year. You're going to see a lot of stuff coming out on the news and stuff about the legislature. And really and truly, you need to try to keep up with it as much as you can. Like Texas news. Would you guys want the weekly legislative updates, the stuff that they're trying to get passed? I get it from Paz I I it. Okay. Uh, does everybody else keep? I mean, you know, I think I'll send it. I can. I can. I don't get it from an email. We need to make sure that Tim's got. He signed up with Hasby and gets his name put in. And, and he, of course, he's got to have what is sixty days. He's got to have his yes or initial training. So we talked about that right after he came on. We wanted to get through, you know, yeah. Christmas break, and we're going to do that. The beginning of February would be ideal that we would do our initial board training. But I'll start including, well, when I receive those links on Friday, some I do, some I don't, but I'll put those links in the weekly update so you can see the legislative updates. Sometimes they're, you know, four or five pages long. Sometimes they're that long. Uh, they'll start popping pretty hard and heavy, especially this next week, as I think the 10th is, no, not the 10th. Is it the 10th and they start, they start today? Uh, they'll start on... It's the second... It'll be on Tuesday. When, I thought it Wednesday. What is today? The eleventh, right? It'll be. I think it's the eleventh. I'll check. I can't remember what it is. It's like the second Wednesday or Tuesday. Or I think it's Wednesday. 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 Okay. Anyway, so it'll be you know, probably this this week. Wednesday. Yeah. Board election signups. Is it the eighteenth or seventeenth? I can't remember. It's the eighteenth. February seventeenth. February January eighteenth through February seventeenth um, for board election signups. Who's up for Mine and Joe, and then there's the two year unexpired. Two year unexpired. Oh, January 18th, February 17th. I said you were. Do you all care if I went again? It's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to me. It's up to me. It's up to you. It's up to you. Your eyes stay well. <laughs> I'm not looking them that down. Talk about four I ain't putting stuff in braille for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't hear you already. <laughs> that was my bone. Braille is holding me. I know. I know. I was just getting back at him. Come on, Sandy. Catch on a little bit. Four day budget. Four day. Our four day seminar is tomorrow. Uh, Miss Pew and I are going to go to that. Uh, it'll be a panel of area schools that have went to four day school weeks we'll discuss the it, it's all day it's eight to four so pros cons ripple effects um community thoughts parent thoughts teacher thoughts administrator thoughts athletic extracurricular ag anything and everything that could be affected we will discuss tomorrow so um i am very interested in this um for the pros and the cons I have that tomorrow on the next day, Wednesday. We have the budget boot camp, same thing, eight to four that Miss Pugh and I will go to. Um, so I can learn more about school finance and the budget. But when I get back on Thursday, I'm going to compile um, the four day seminar and I'm going to send out as much as I learn, as much as I know, I'm going to send to you guys first. And then we will go from there. I don't know, but I'm very, very interested in it. 
So back to that, our team of eight training, you know, we talked about, and so I, I was waiting because I thought the budget boot camp must be, uh, might be us, you know, but aren't we going to, the team of eight training, concentrate on the budget and probably get that early? Or is that, I mean, it didn't, remember, we talked about doing it early. Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, that's up to y'all. If y'all, if that's what y'all would like to do, then uh, he can get people that's going to come in here and talk to us about that. And that would be the subject that they'd go over. It's not just for us to get in here and discuss stuff. We are supposed to be training, too. I mean, we're supposed to, And I think that I think the first time when we made that first list up was probably one of the best ones we've ever had. And it's the last training we had, I didn't feel like it was all that beneficial. Uh, and I really, they asked us more questions and we did more talking than they did, I thought. But, and, and so I thought if it is going to be us talking, let's talk about the budget since we, you know, kind of waiting the last minute, not sure. And Denise is wanting to know what we might want to do. So again, budget's just on my mind to look at seriously. So I guess if we could have, I don't know what kind of training or I don't know. If it's it's you know. wide open. It's it's like Terry said, it's geared towards us. So if you guys want to compile a list of, you know, your your wants and your needs for training and for learning, and I will put them together and send them to our trainers. And we have all of Region 10 and Region 8. Uh, really, we have statewide people that can come train us. So they can give us experts in any any field that we need or we want. So I'll put that in our update as well this week to compare those ideas. Get a deal for a bond. I know the training for a bond. I think if you, that put that, if you go yeah. the budget stuff, I think you can, they can bring that into the budget because that's all part of it. I mean, yeah, we're going to have to, but I think the, the main thing is we just got to be conscious of if we ever do, when we do a budget, we just got to make sure that we get somebody that's going to be very proactive and trying to push it. And I don't think that we had that the last time. I really don't. Uh, that's and I I'll say that till the day I die. And I know what we had the first time we had it. The when we back, and then it was totally different when we tried to do them other budget, those other bonds. There was not the support from the, the people that we hired to help us or anything else. Could it have been just had more negativity against it? That probably was partial, but still yet, I still don't think that we got the effort from uh, our, the person that we here. hired. I don't think that we got the effort from them that we should have gotten. And it was nothing like the first group that we hired, even though he did screw us in the long run. <laughs> I think you have to rely a lot on social media, and we didn't have anyone to help us with no. that. Where the negative was way over the top yeah. on that, yeah. So it brings together more voices of but that's, negative. That's I mean the negativity is statewide right now because of what's going on with the economy and stuff. Okay. So the one thing I did hear last night on the news that the the state of Texas has twenty seven billion dollars to use this year that they haven't even. Looked at, yeah, but they said they're 27 billion over their what the rainy day funds usually set at, mm. and they they said that they they're going they've got some projects that they want to get done. And I had one from Texas that. ISD this morning was 400 million set aside for uh, glass film windows, doors, stuff like that that will be divvied out to schools soon. So anyway. Okay. What are they doing as so, far as the mi the migration that's coming in here to really the schools are probably suffering from that. Oh, you know, big time. Yeah. not having bilingual, not having ESL, not having enough because that's only going to spread 
to our area. It's not been addressed. It hadn't been addressed. Been addressed. No, That's okay. Well, we'll see. <laughs> well, I mean, I we'll see what happens in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, but they cleaned it up for him today. So he can <laughs> see it. <laughs> so. Anyway, uh, I tell you what, let's, let's look at this in February and let's get put on the agenda that and we can discuss um, subjects that we want to see in our team of eight training and get that done. Okay. That'll be, and we can do that first part so, of February and then we can look at the end of February and maybe first or sometime March. Okay. And, but we can get a subject matter that we're all interested in and something that we need to have. I'm going to be honest with you, but budgets and finance, school finance, as long as I've been on the board, I still don't get all of it. I, I don't get it. No, I'm never going to get all of it. I still don't it's get it. We don't have, we're not privy to that formula. It's all done yeah. Yeah. It's all done in those yeah. things that you get downloaded. It's yeah. all calculated on the back but end. If we, but we talked about having a budget workshop one time. And we really, it was just that. If we want to have a budget workshop, we can have a budget workshop, but that's not going to be the team of eight. Okay, it's well, that needs to be sometime, though. And Denise needs to be there because she does know all about the money, the, you know, more than any of us do. And we, we need to kind of get some ideas about our priorities generally, and then we can whittle them down later when we get the full money we're going to get from the state. But this last planning, we it seems like it was just a last minute last year. We didn't really have a plan or that we all agreed on to do until, you know, and things got thrown at us anyway. That's right. I just wasn't satisfied with the budget last year. I, mean, I can I can call a workshop when we need to. Well, again, I wish it would be early and maybe if we could spend an hour to just get an idea maybe of how we're going to work. We can do but then our maybe that we can do that in February and before and still have a uh, we'll have that still talk about what subject we want to go over. So, but we can set up a budget workshop. Since not, since we didn't participate in the uh, convention, can we look at maybe bringing TASB people? Because they're far more, in my opinion, trained in better delivery of any presentation, in my opinion. Y'all may not agree, but they're top notch, mm -hmm. the TASB people, Absolutely. as compared to others that I've had to listen to. <laughs> Are you talking about for Team of Eight? Mm -hmm. Sure. We, I know it's pricey, but we didn't, none of us went to the convention, so. We have any resource available to us we need, so whatever we want, we can, we can get. To that question, Jansen, I don't know if this would be for that meeting or not, for the, but um, I know this uh, four-day four uh, school week deal, y'all got to up again. Is that something that we would talk about at that point? At that meeting, have somebody come in and talk to us about it, or yay or nay, or is that a no, different I, deal? We'll see what they come up with first because they've been studying it and they've been looking at it, the, them and the administrators. And when they go to this boot camp or whatever it is, what's coming up, it's tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Tomorrow, then I think that they need to bring that to the information to us meeting. Because that's something we need to talk about. Yeah, I think it was Brian. Well, yeah, wasn't he telling me that Dodge City said they're? Well, I heard they were uh, kicking it around. And I, and I Jennifer Morris at Hector told me they were yeah. kicking it around. Yeah, Shane's already told me. So that. I figured, like I said, I'll, they'll all be going to it for so. Is Grayford our size, or are they? They're one eight. So hey, did you talk to someone from Gray? Okay, they're pretty top notch. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm just sure. curious to see. I have all I have their transition plan from five day to four day in our in, in my Google Drive. Um, Jake Bell and Jeff Bell are the principal and they're the administrators there. Uh, and I know them very well. And they shared everything from, you know, step zero to step a billion, however many it's. That's took. good. We might wanna, I mean, I'm wondering what they're finding, what their results are. Did they say anything to you about how they liked it so far? Or? They love it, but it's been a year or two. It's not it's not a long. Yeah. Nobody has. Well, I think what a while. Is especially like Edgar and Dodd City, you, you'll have to watch again. You'll be leaking teachers and students if you don't watch it. If everybody around you is doing it, you know, and uh, I don't know. Hey, the one other thing before we move on, Chance, I know you're talking about the roof and stuff. Um, so this gym over here, 
what are we going to have to do to get it up where we can have turn volleyball tournaments or what? So again, I, you know, we talked about it at the game on Friday and I said, there has been no correspondence. I emailed them again today. Hey, what do I need to do to get this? We want a traditional wood floor in this gym, or I want at least prices and options and quotes on that. I sent that this morning before we went to CC's and Golden Crown has not responded. So what I'm going to do is just go to another group and start asking them. So in your opinion, just looking at the gym, though, I mean, what, of course, is going to, the floor needs to be in shape, playing shape or whatever, but it, what else would need to happen to be able to host? Uh, that's pretty we much We can't it. even practice in there. You know, that's why we've moved to <laughs> gym practices and um, is it waving? It's, it's got so ridges in it. The floor is not that old. No, it ain't. We replaced that floor. Yeah, we just replaced that floor. And so we, we might want to hold someone accountable for that floor. It's yeah. been since I've been on. Yeah, it, it's been. I wanted Harvin's to bring been, that up. Harvin's been there and seen it. We went and looked at it. And oh, I don't doubt it. But it's some, got ridges in it. Like okay. they're small, but they're like, but, I don't know. But that, that floor is not. Like year after we got So yeah, how to be under warranty or something. So, oh, right. That's what I'm going to ask. That's the issue that we had with the old floor because it was warping too. Yeah, I think what it is, they laid the plywood down there and then they put boards. In the joints between the plywood. And I think what happened is plywood made, it's actually just the border just pushing up a little between all the joints. Yeah, but this looks different here than the way it worked before. It's, the old way yeah, it's like a ridge down there. Uh -uh. So you think it's the mortar in there? That... Yeah. I would say he's just right. Somebody knows what they're doing. They go in there and roll all that up and sand all that stuff back down. Yeah. The mortar and everything. We need to find so out. Put the mortar that, in there. That, the floor had a the warranty on it. Okay. Floor floor floor. People. Do you know how old that is? Because I can remember us voting to have that redone, and I don't. I don't remember. We spent over. A, it was a hundred and something thousand. Plus, we also put in some kind of ventilation because of condensation that was. Well, we haven't had that issue. Okay. And now, four star put in. They put in they the put in, They in. put in a pull out the uh, yeah right. To keep the humidity level down in the gym. No matter what the air conditioner or heater said, the humidity level came went to a certain level. It kicked on to right. reduce humidity. Right in the gym. But now we still have a problem. Well, yeah, that, but it's it's a, a different it's a different, different issue. issue. But we, we may want to hold them accountable. We need to look back at and find out when that was. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that, I'm I don't guess nobody remembers how long the warranty was on those. Two no. I was thinking it, it's her 10 years. I Didn't that just, yeah. Well, he's wanting to know what it is. You know, I was thinking somebody trying to come in. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm not I'm hearing something. Long story. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I don't remember what year. I was going to ask that. I forgot all about it. I, I knew that they'd sent the letter for it. And stuff. Okay. It's. Mm -hmm. Starting price, I think, is going to be around two hundred thousand. If you wanted to just go in and put a one down, like we have at the high school, the other one was completed ruined pretty much. Yeah. So, did they did they take the other wood floor up, or did they put that on top of it? So they took it completely up. Okay. Here's what happened: the old wood floor was taken up. The south floor was still, for the most part, in good shape over there. We just went and had to here and there, a spot here and there. Replace just a few boards here and there on the sub floor. Then they put plywood on top of that and screwed it all down. And then they run that floor out. Which my understanding is that vinyl floor was supposed to be a competition type floor. It was. That's supposed because, to be. as a matter of fact, it, it's they, it ain't right now. That's not even close. They can't even practice on it. I'll be curious to know how old it is. We can hold it in the We need to check that out. Find it. Be no more than four years old. How long have been on his job? No, he's on his second. Yeah. It wasn't while I was in here. I would think it was under 10. Yeah, because he ain't been in here but eight years. Come up eight. So we put it in when you were on the board. So eight years. So it's got to be here. 2016, somewhere after. I meant to tell you that when we it was brought up from the teachers that wanted it, it shouldn't be that old. This well, maybe remember. there's warranty on it, yeah. I, I hope so. because they're probably out of business. Probably, that's what probably, I was thinking. Yeah. They're probably out of business. Because it's kind of jacked. 
to work not to mean people work. stay in business no. very long. Not no. mean people stay employed okay. anywhere very long. No. All right. No. Anything else on boot camps or anything like that? Yes. Got that, that I'll report. give y'all updates as soon as I get back. All right. Good question on your uh, weekly update. You, you mentioned that there were nine Golden Cardinals, but this uh, report said eight. And, uh, no, I updated that. I uh, I left one off. We actually had ten. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. About that. Hey, I where's the higher number? That's good. That's good. I, 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 I misread a name. I got the golden crown the day after leaving. CC's with the little kids. Gets a golden crown for the old kids. And Daniel says, "All right, guys, get up. It's time to go home." Like, are you kidding? Me? I'm gonna sit here by myself now. <laughs> Okay, at this time, I am going to make a motion that we go into executive session, Texas Government 551.074 at 816. Do I hear a motion? Second. I All those in favor? Seven four nine opposed. Thank you. It is ten eleven. I will call the call us out of uh, closed meeting at ten eleven. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Seven four nine opposed. Is there any motions coming out of the? Executive session. I make the motion to accept the re retirement of Mike Smith effective January 31st, 2030. 2030. Yeah. Second. Okay. Second. Motion made by Sandy, seconded by Brian. For Mike Smith. All those in favor? All four, none opposed. Any other? I make the motion to accept the retirement of Tammy Smith effective January 31st, 2023. I second that. And seconded. All those in favor? I forward, no vote. I make a motion that we offer roll one year to the contract of Jance Morris and give him a 3% raise effective in January. Second it. Seconded by Barbara. All those in favor? Seven, four, none of them. Any other? I make a motion that we renew Jance's contract as the AD and go from a two thousand uh, dollar stipend uh, semester to a three thousand dollar stipend semester. I second that. Ken seconded. All those in favor? Seven, four, none opposed. Are you supposed to say pay effective? They pay if you know, pay effective uh, January, yeah, January. Yeah. January, yeah. Okay. All right. Any other business? If not, I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting at 10 13. Second it. Second it by Brian. Well, I have you guys here. Oops. All those in favor? Seven, four, and up. And we'll be here Friday morning to give a contract, a full-time contract to Miss Martin. We yeah. didn't have that on tonight. I'll be here. I'll be. I'll be. Okay. I can probably be here. Um, you guys want to go at nine nine o'clock? It's fine. Nine nine o'clock. When? Friday morning, nine o'clock. This coming Friday. Yes, sir. I'll be. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be. Hey Terry, I'll need you. Said we can keep the one that we wrote, right? Yeah. But then do we give that back no. to you? Yeah. You might send okay. a text. Got a copy of. Yeah, I know all of it all the time. Right? And then the financial report that goes with us too. Uh, if you don't want it, give it back to me because I may. I don't yeah, want that. Don't want them. No, no, that's my brother. That's my. I'll give that back. Yeah, well, so, please. What do you need? Uh, the financial report. If you don't want it, I'll let them have it back. No, oh, ma'am. Do you want the black binder? No, ma'am. Yeah. If you don't want to keep it, it. Oh, oh, hey, it was it was very well. yeah. that's the one y'all that's the crew. No, you got over there. We went on this. Okay, we went to yeah. Jamaica. Yeah, I've been on this.
in Green Cayman? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so, yeah, that was several years ago. Yeah. Well, there. Yes, yes, yes. We got to get her. I'm so okay. glad you don't need me, do you? Yeah, something um, we can talk about you and Sandy. I'm going to find out how to do it. I want to get that back. Yeah, I have to do that. I need some of those things. I need five. So we have now two, 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 three here, two there, and that's where I see what your hourly looks like. No. But the way they explained it before, I never was clear on what they were getting paid per hour. So, um, and it's simply a joke. Get that. It reminded me not to miss All right. Is that yours or is that Stephen's? Yeah, I don't think you know. I've got. No, I don't know. Stephen's got 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 yeah, I know. 